hey guys what is up it's that time again and i've got six new decks for you guys for the new expansion now normally i put this video out on the day of the expansion this time around i wanted to wait a little bit i gave myself an extra day and i'm putting it out the day after the reason being is that i often do these videos you know because like usually it's the day one it's the expansion hype right you guys always want decks on day one and i get that and a lot of the times i do these like theorycraft decks i spend a lot of time making sure they're as good as i can be but theorycraft can only go so far right and i do want these decks to be as good as possible so i decided even though it's probably a little bit worse for like the viewership of the video i wanted to wait an extra day just to make sure that these decks could be play tested uh decks that i had a lot of time to kind of like mess around and work with and make sure were as good as possible for you guys across these decks in this video we're using all four of the new champions in the expansion so we're gonna go ahead and get into it if you want to try out any of the decks or look at the deck codes from this video then i'm putting the link or links in the description in the pinned comment not the description no the pinned comment go to the pinned comment you can find the decks it's updated version i make sure to update my decks so it's probably going to be a couple cards different in this video even by the time you look at it now check the updated versions where you can import the decks in the pitch comment all right let's get into it first up and in no particular order we've got lulu yumi fey kind of like swarm yordles and arms deck doing a lot of different things i call it yumi in arms and this is a deck that i built with kuvira on the first day of the expansion basically the idea of this deck is pretty simple we're actually combining the two most powerful regions in the game vandal city and Tomasia. We're combining a lot of the independently most powerful cards and concepts in the game uh the new cards petrocyte broadwing super super powerful you guys are going to be seeing this card in basically every demacia deck for a while cards just straight up not okay it's just ridiculous um and of course a couple heavy hitters we've got the kind of like fey package the small fey package the short list of gleaming lantern looping telescope yumi grandfather fey and assistant light player barian basically we're swarming we're gonna get really good discounts with gleaming lantern yumi and looping looping telescope even grandfather fey like all of these cards generate more cards so they're gonna make sure we don't run out of value in our deck we'll always have more to play and yordles in arms is of course an incredibly powerful finisher there are currently i've seen about a dozen different yordles in arms decks already and it's just on the first day uh and i can guarantee you guys there will be multiple yordles yeah yordle i can guarantee you guys there's going to be multiple yordles in arms decks that will be in tier one this card is very very powerful and the idea of just like going wide swarming the board enabling yordles in arms is going to win people games in this case we're using it with golden aegis we can either win games with yordles with a rally or even with both right we can like do a big board buff into a rally if we need but it's a very very super straightforward deck very easy to play uh and yumi is actually a really good role in this deck because she makes sure you never run out of steam a lot of these decks lose to a lot of like beefy board based decks that can sometimes just like outvalue you and trade you with two big units yumi does a really good job of making sure we're able to outgrind to those decks because she keeps hitting the board and you know she never dies right when they kill your unit she goes back to hand you play her again she's like a recurring buff all right next up we've got galio soraka all right i'm gonna have to move we so that you guys can see the cards this is actually a deck that's not made by me normally i show you guys off my own decks uh this one was made by grandpa roji and it actually is able to use soraka with galio pretty well surprisingly in particular the one thing that sets this deck apart from a lot of other galio sorakas is specifically gifts from beyond in this version this card pulling crescendum uh is a really really good way to take out the petrocyte broadwing from your deck and petrocyte broadwing is so so important to be able to cheat out that's one of the things targon can do of course crescendum giving us access to pull out a two cost follower from our deck and having access to petrocyte broadwing in every single game is super powerful because if you've played against these kinds of decks before where you just need to keep your units health high with cards like zenith blade cards like astral protection keep a single thing keep it alive and make sure you're you know stomping over the game then making sure you draw it every game is super super important of course like all galio decks we are going to be running the early package uh of you know durand protege petrus i hound is actually it's not in every galio deck but it's pretty common in especially these early days ones and it's a good way of just having more formidable so it's basically a full formidable deck and because we're running zenith blade we can even run mountain drake too uh effectively the deck is really simple 
it's as formidable as you get give your units as much health as humanly possible give them overwhelm with zenith blade and make those overwhelm formidable units dunk on the opponent's nexus you have a <coughs> excuse me I have a bit of a cough you have a lot of ways of being able to do this but this way is unique in that we have soraka which is really cool it's nice to see soraka being able to finally do something outside of tom kench i don't know if this will stay there's currently tons and tons of different galio lists being experimented with as well i can also guarantee you guys there will be at least some tier one galio deck because galio as well as petricide broadwing are insanely powerful cards and this is just one way of using them the third deck we've got hey look it's papercraft fizz i'm gonna move back to my corner here mm. all right papercraft fizz so for those of you guys who might not have seen this deck from the youtube video that i put out playing an early version of this concept against grappler this is basically an otk deck we are killing the opponent very very quickly with a combo kill usually with a big elusive fizz or overwhelm the crux of this deck is papercraft dragon this card is absolutely ludicrous five mana give a unit plus two plus two and double attack is ridiculous and it is by far the best attach card now, the thing about Papercraft Dragon that makes it so powerful is just the way the attach keyword works. Uh, it's undisruptible because it's a unit. If the opponent silences or transforms via like mini morph, your main unit that Papercraft Dragon is attached to, Papercraft Dragon will still be providing that unit plus two, plus two, and double attack even through silence or transform. And of course, this deck has access to a lot of ways for Papercraft Dragon to be able to close games. We can put it on our Fizz, which can't be targeted by non-burst spells because Fizz will disjoint anything that's non-burst. We can put Blade of the Exile on Fizz. We can use Blade of the Exile from Riven on Riven. We can use Blade of the Exile with our Papercraft Dragon. But lastly, we also have the Assistant Librarian. Now, this is a card that we also saw in the sort of like Fey Demacia deck earlier. Assistant Librarian is absolutely insane in this deck because we have so many ways of being able to trigger the Faded keyword in this deck. Uh, so Assistant Librarian is going to get big. Overwhelm will allow her to strike Nexus. She's an amazing target for the early Riven Blade Fragments. Now, if you are a Riven connoisseur like I am, and I've played a lot of Riven decks, you'll know how common it is at the at the early turns of the game you kind of just need to dump out the blade fragments before you're getting the blade of the exile the first couple of blade fragments like the quick attack one and the overwhelm one are often not doing anything at all you just have to waste the mana somewhere along the way just to be able to get to the blade of the exile well because assistant librarian has faded suddenly you're actually able to use those for plus one plus one grants which is super insane so yeah assistant librarian absolutely insane in this deck this i think is going to be a very powerful deck it's a just super super fast kill combo and it is dangerously hard to shut down i mean not only is fizz basically immune to any non-burst spell but if i'm you know as a, whatever unit i'm buffing let's say a papercraft dragon that unit and the opponent mini morphs my attack when i go through you know i'll probably have like 20 attack and overwhelm by that point they mini morph me right well my unit's now a five five double attack it's a mini t right because it's it's a three three but it still has papercraft dragon attached to it so it's a five five double attack and then i just might it so they're just dead like even if they mini morph me or hush me they're just dead if they use a non-burst spell then my fizz will stop it from happening and of course we've got a couple copies of friendship so that even if we don't draw fizz or scholarly climber we'll be able to give spell shields to our unit or barrier if we need it basically this deck is a little sickening uh, i've refined it quite a bit actually since i showed it to you guys before you might notice the yordle squires in here which i think will make it all the more disgusting um and i look forward to playing this deck actually all day on stream today if you happen to be watching this video on the day i go live if you check out twitch.tv slash swimstream where i stream every day there you know if you want to watch some gameplay you can check out i'm probably playing this deck literally right now maybe next we've got galio nar here a little bit different now this is the second deck that's not actually made by me this was uh i think it was a concept originally messed around with by prodigy uh and then cephalopod took it and like messed around with it a little bit uh and i actually haven't made any changes with it which is pretty rare for me normally like when i look at versions of decks i'll at least like change some things this i actually like off the bat uh it's got pretty solid ratioing you know obviously 
comes down to like what the meta is going to end up we'll have to see but i'm a very big fan of where this list is at again it's using a lot of the demacia tools we've seen galio we've seen petricide broadwing extremely powerful cards and the two best new champions galio as well as nar so this is a powerhouse of a deck uh frawl yord is kind of like back in full fashion uh out of nowhere because uh, suddenly the idea of troll chant is really really good frawl yord got some new tools in the form of vulpine wanderer nar um, a couple of their new cards. I mean, this deck is using the Merc Wolf Shaman as well as the Mammoth Shaman. And some other decks are able to use the Tusk thing very well. But is it Tusk Shaman? The Overwhelm, the two mana, three, two Overwhelm. I can never remember that card's name, but it doesn't really work in this kind of deck. Either way, Freljord is actually surprisingly on right now. And people are using Freljord with Formidable as well. This is kind of the other way to run Galio. Uh, you can either run it with Targon or with Freljord. And this build is actually surprisingly solid. So what does this build do? basically it's just a standard galio build instead of trying to you know kill the opponent really fast with like a cheesy zenith blade combo off of having a really high health unit this deck mostly just slows down tries to play for board value and just makes sure it sets up for the galio turn this is kind of more of a galio deck rather than like a petrocyte broadwing deck i mean in all honesty the soraka the other galio deck we saw before the soraka one is pretty much just like as Petrocyte Broadwing deck, I mean, it was tutoring them out of the deck and just buffing them and keeping them alive and just overwhelming. This one is an actual honest to god Galio deck. You're just slow playing the board, keeping your units alive. It's a basic mid range strategy until Galio comes down to finish the game, which you're usually relying on with this deck because we're not really putting on a lot of pressure without him. But the Galio rally is super, super big here. Anyway, if you want the idea of a Galio deck, but you like a slower playstyle in your Demacia decks, uh, basically out of the three Demacia decks we've showed so far, the Yumi one is pretty fast. It's very swarmy. The Soraka one is kind of like medium speed. You have some cheesy combo blowouts with Zenith Blade, but for the most part, you are, you know, a slow Demacia deck. This one is a lot slower than both. We're trying to slow down the game. We've got Kindly Tavern Keeper to heal ourselves up. So this is kind of like the true like Demacia in its form not even trying to use like early rallies like gold Aegis. we're just waiting until the galio turn so if you want a slower play style to play for the board and you know trade down units this is going to be the deck for you now deck number five actually returns to a bit of an old classic uh some of you guys will be familiar with this style of deck which is the bandle noxus burn it's very very basic aggro uh you are kind of like swarming the bird with or bird bird Swarming the board with early drops, you're gonna be able to, you know, vomit out your one drops in your hand. Like this deck runs a beautiful 12 one drops. You're going to deal a lot of early damage to the opponent. You've got Ziggs, you've got Gnar, of course, and you've got this new card, Teeny Dactyl. Out of the new transform, Teeny Dactyl is pretty much um, the only one that's going to be like really competitive, but boy, is this card pretty nuts. Uh, Teeny Dactyl is pretty amazing in any sort of like burn bandle deck people will run this in noxus versions people will run this in bilge water versions as well it just does a lot in terms of being able to impact the board get beef stats for no reason and uh, even do some free damage at the start of rounds it's just ridiculous but apart from that it's a pretty standard noxus aggro game plan play with units for the first like four to five turns of the game and then after that you're trying to end the game with noxian fervor decimate even usually like pokey stick poison dart impact you've got a lot of ways to close out the game uh nar is a super powerful tool and the one of poison dart in this deck is actually adorable because not only can it burn your opponent's face for over the top but for one mana can actually be a really nice way to enable nar or teeny dactyl on certain turns where you might not really have another way to do it there's a lot of turns on like defense where you need that flip and the one of poison dart actually does help with that quite a bit Overall, if you're looking for a deck that's going to end games fast, uh, that's going to climb fast, I mean, aggro is always going to be the fastest way to climb ranked ladder, um, because even if it has a slightly lower win rate, win, win, win rate, oh God, what is wrong? Even if it has a slightly lower win rate, uh, which if, this one probably doesn't even, it's the fact that you're going to be able to end games so fast is going to mean you're, you're climbing up the ladder faster. Right, so if you're looking to race to like diamond or masters, this is definitely your deck. And last, but not least, okay, maybe least, uh, is this Udyr deck. Yeah, no, you guys are looking for it. It's it's Udyr. I mean, I said at the start of the video that we'd use all four champions. This is it. This is the Udyr deck. You happy now? You got your Udyr deck. 
So as you guys might know, Udyr is not a great champion. He's he's okay. He's he feels a little bad. He's a little left behind the pack. Um, but this is actually a deck that's able to use him quite well. If you watched my stream uh, yesterday, you might have seen me build around with this deck because I actually played this pretty much all day yesterday. Actually, uh, this was originally a concept by Kuvira. We toyed around with it, ended up changing a lot of cards. But the idea of Udir in Shirima actually works really really well and i think it's easily the best way to use udir to the most of his capabilities this deck fits the playstyle that is udir very well now as you can probably infer from my tone and my setup this is definitely the weakest of the six decks if you're looking for ranked ladder wins pick one of the other five ones honestly any of them they're all good this deck is not bad uh, i'm actually I had a lot of fun with playing it with it yesterday at least to some very long and very interesting games if that's your play style basically the idea behind this deck is it is a very kind of slow mid-range attrition deck and we are keeping our units alive with a lot of cheap combat tricks we've got troll chant we've got elixir of iron we've got of course even like quicksand and we are using strike keywords off of udir off of aquarian bruiser and we're making sure that we're keeping our units alive with the combat tricks our units off of staying alive and striking are making sure we are drawing more cards which of course is kind of the downside of using these cheap combat tricks you're not usually allowed to because you run out of steam and of course all the while our Akshan's palace is triggering our Vakor and Vagamon's palace is triggering this deck flips through palace progress like nobody's business so of course it's a deck that does use Udir but at its forefront this is an Akshan deck that's the way to think about this right you are flipping Akshan and his palace stuff very very quickly and very very consistently and that's kind of where a lot of the value of this deck comes from so for the most part it's a value streamer deck you've got a lot of classic streamer combos like treasure seekers uh you know waking sands into some vulnerable from merciless hunter um there's a lot of things that this deck does now of course udir himself is not the linchpin of this deck but one of the value engines if you keep him alive you know he comes out on turn five pretty comparable to vicar and bruiser he has less health but he gives bigger payoff whenever he strikes he's getting you know a more valuable card than the payday uh, it's a little bit more expensive but that's totally fine and basically the idea behind this deck is it's going to be vulnerable to early pressure which is why it's going to be a little bit awkward on ladder but it will do very very well into any deck that isn't trying to rush you down right you're good against a lot of like slower decks like swain decks or like control decks if you play those matchups well you should actually basically always win with this which is why and i know this is gonna sound weird but this kind of build i actually expect to do pretty well in tournaments i would actually be surprised if in the next two seasonals we didn't see some versions of this kind of concept in the top 32 uh of those seasonals right uh which sounds weird because I just called this deck kind of weak it's not really going to do well in ladder but for runeterra tournaments you want a different approach to the idea of like tournament deck building and a lot of decks like this that have unique matchup tables unique champion combinations and unique targets that they're able to do well while also in an environment where there's less aggro there's less rushdown will actually do pretty well uh, i've said this before and like every time i say this you guys are always like t swim you just said it was a bad deck what do you mean it's gonna be good in tournaments i said the same exact thing about talia thralls that was the last time i said it and i'll keep saying it again yeah this this kind of build will actually make sense in some specific tournament lineups won't be everyone but that's okay but i'm super glad udir at least has a bit of a home despite not being a great card he fits into this kind of deck really really well of course you're never leveling up though don't even try he i i played this deck literally like six hours yesterday and i apart from like leveling on the kill attack he never leveled once don't even bother his level up doesn't even do anything 